Hello everyone, welcome back. And in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to make our adder a little bit more than two bits, because two bits definitely isn't enough. We're also going to figure out exactly how fast this adder is right now. And we're also going to build that magical device which makes it so the falling edge never happens. So, to start off with, we're going to make this 8-bit, because it's a good place to start, generally speaking, because it's where the carry signal line cuts off, and it's also generally good as a baseline if you're building a serious computer. If you're building something just for experimenting, 4 bits is plenty, but if you can build something serious, 8 bits is enough. So I'm going to go right here, set this to position 1, and if you still have the lever here, make sure you break it off or it's going to cause issues. Now I'm going to go here, I'm going to change my inputs around a bit. I'm going to change these to wires, like this. The reason I'm going to do like this is because otherwise I'm going to go through and do it for every single one, and that's just painful. And actually I'm going to do like this. And it, does, it doesn't make any difference right now, but in a bit this is going to make quite a bit of difference. And I just derped it up, didn't I? Yep, I just derped it up. Ah, I'm a genius. That's okay. So, this should be everything I need, just to make them even, because I have OCD like that. I'm going to put these here. Doesn't really matter, but yeah. So, two right there. Again, don't include this, because that's just part of the first bit, and it's taken to account for right here. So, now I'm just going to stack this three times, and since 2 times 3 is 6, and 6 plus 2 is 8, this gives me 8 bits. And now I can place the lever right here to make sure this stays on. So yeah, now we should have 8 bits, and that means 9 outputs, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 outputs, since 8-bit addition gets 9-bit output. And yeah, so yeah, we now have a complete and full 8-bit adder. Now here's a question. Is this the amount we're going to have in the overall CPU? I'm going to have a different video talking about what's good amount of bits for CPUs at some point, but at this point I'm just going to put it pretty simple. I'm either going to do this tutorial for 8 bits or for 16 bits. It's going to be exactly the same either way, except 8 bits Excuse me, except 16 bits is going to have a little bit more stacking involved. That's pretty much the only difference. If you'd rather me build the tutorial with a 16 bit computer, please post a comment saying you want 16 bits, and please tell me why. That's the most important part. If you'd rather have me build the video for 8 bits, please post a comment, and please tell me why. I'll let you decide which one you want me to do. And if you want to do a different one on your own, again, remember, that doesn't matter. You can do it however you want. This is just what you're going to watch me do. If you want to see me watch more stacking, or if you have another reason why we see 16 bits, post about that. If you want to see me 8 bits, again, post that. Post reason why. Reason why is very important. Anyways, enough of that. Now, let's continue this. So first off, we just did world edit stack, and world edit stacking is incredibly derpy. So first thing you should do, check for piston derps, because world edit loves to destroy your piston. It's like world edit just wants to slaughter pistons, because I some unbeknownst reason, but it does. So, place all those pistons, if they derp like that. Very important step. It's really easy, you just break it and replace it. Break, replace. You can actually do this a little more efficiently, so... Break. Okay, that actually doesn't work. I... Never mind. I thought I could do it better, but no I can't, because pistons are orientation-based replacing. So, break... How did that... I'm not even gonna. <laughs> okay, well, that was interesting. Well, okay. And there. And unless there's more pistons that dripped up that I can't see, which it doesn't appear that any have, that should fix our 8 bit, our now 8 bit adder. So now, just to test to make sure it works, let's do 4 plus 7. Because why not? That should give me 11 if it works. And what do you know? It gave me 11. So, there we go. We have 11. Whoops, whoops, nope. 
Okay, so now let's build that magical device that makes the falling edge not happen. Well, I, but actually, one before that, I just want to count to make sure I know how big this is. So, f upwards, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's seven blocks high. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And everything past this is just wiring. There's no actual logic going on here. So this is where it ends. So it's ten by seven by two per bit. That's pretty small. So, now let's build that rising edge device, that magical rising edge device I've kept talking about, we've been relying on. We're finally going to see what it is, because that's actually not what it's supposed to do at all. It's just a side effect of it. What this device is, is it's something called a control line. And what it does is actually pretty simple. In fact, I can build a control line for one bit right now. It's incredibly easy. It's a piston. That's it. You might be wondering, how can putting a piston here make any difference at all? Here's how. One of the big problems in adders, and really a lot of big complicated piston-based devices, is synchronization. If the inputs aren't in sync, it's very easy for pistons to drop blocks, it's very easy for them to derp, it's very easy to get a lot of errors if your inputs aren't in sync. And it's also very hard to make sure all your inputs are always remaining in sync. So, what the control line is, is really just an artificial way to make sure your inputs stay in sync. The way it works is incredibly simple. All it will do is, first off, you'll activate it, and, we'll, and what this will do is we'll set whatever inputs you have to zero. And ideally this should be after you're done with whatever your previous result was. So after you're done with that, you'll activate the control line. This will set everything to zero. This is why the falling edge doesn't matter, because the falling edge will happen while you're waiting at this point. Because that's what you're doing at this point. You're just waiting for all of your inputs to arrive. So maybe this arri bit arrives now, maybe, I don't know, this bit arrives now, and it doesn't matter, because control line's preventing anything from happening. So maybe a bit goes off, maybe it was just a pulse for some reason? I don't know. But uh, let's say you know that after this much time, this is when all your inputs are correct. What you can do now is you can retract the control line, and then all your inputs will go through perfectly in sync. So that's all it is. It's an artificial method of synchronization. And as an effect, it causes a falling edge to never have an effect in computation, because it simply doesn't happen if all your inputs are arriving at once. At least not when you're actually computing something. When it happens, that's when the control line goes down, and that's when you're done with your result. And that's why we can ignore the falling edge like we've been doing. So yeah, so now let's build this control line. Like I, like you saw, it's pretty straightforward. And that's why I added those little dips in. And, whoops. Yeah. So, no. Let's just add all your pistons in. Give them all blocks. And you can break this block now. So there we go. Those are our first few pistons of our control line. Our next pistons are going to be down here. So to get these, they're going to be right here. And this is going to cause problems, isn't it? Of course it isn't, actually. Never mind, that's me being a derp again. That will not cause any problems at all. So yeah. So here's how the control line is going to work. I'm just going to place pistons like this. And these pistons right here are generally the trickier ones to get in. But once you have them in, they're in. So... And, yeah. So what I'm going to do is just like this. I believe there's one over here, so I'm going to put it over here. And yeah. That one's already set. And there. And I believe... Yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure I didn't screw that up. Whoops. And <laughs> there. Now... What we can do is place all of these fence gates on top. What we're going to do is turn all these into block update detectors. And really, I could do the control line here, I suppose, if I really, really wanted to. But the thing is, 
I don't really, really want to, so I'm going to do it over here. And, yeah. So, now I have all those in place. Place dust here. And powering this dust is going to activate those little pistons. Now, the only question is how to hook this up. That tends to be the trickiest part of building control lines, hooking all this stuff up. At least in this design right here. To hook it all up... Yeah, I'm actually going to need to think about this, because... I had a design for this pre-planned, but I am going to sort of forgot it, so I'm going to go check that right now. Because I completely forgot how I solved this, and I know it was one of the trickier issues. Okay, so I looked up how I did it on the RDF, and it was actually incredibly simple. All I did was I did the wire like this. That's it, that's all I did. Don't know why I couldn't think of that, but... A. So, yeah. Now here's the question, how do we power it? Because if I power it from here, it doesn't reach all the way. Misses that one. And you generally want these to be in sync, because the whole point is synchronization. So you don't want to add repeaters onto this, because that'll desynchronize everything. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a repeater and a block right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this down so that doesn't interfere with the repeater. And that'll still work. And now, right here, this is my input. And I think, great, it's working. If I do it five, and then you flip these, you notice that horrifying sound of pistons moving. This is because you notice it's powering the torches. And the way you fix this is actually really simple. All you do is do like that. And it's like magic. All of your problems have been... Yeah, I don't really know what I was trying to say, but I was trying to say all your problems have gone away. Don't know how I got been, but whatever, I'll go with it now. All of your problems have been away for, for some reason. <laughs> this, this is what happens when you record too many videos for too long at once. And yeah, so 5 and 3. Now you notice, right now my output is 0, because my control line's stopping it. If I release my control line, and it gets the 8, just like it should. And now that we have a control line, we can test if our adder is really as fast as we think it is. Because we think this should be pretty fast with all of our extra fancy piston logic and such. So let's go ahead and test it. Okay, so I went ahead and I set up a very simple system to test the speed of the adder. First off, I have the theoretical worst case scenario of any ripple carry adder, which is 127 plus 1. So all bits but the very last one on, plus one more bit. Because this means it has to carry across every single bit. So, this is what we're going to do. 127 plus 1. And, the way I have it set up is I have one master lever. First thing it does is it turns its torch off, which is one tick. That's powering the control line. Note, the control line takes one tick before it affects the pistons. This actually takes two ticks before it sends the adder it takes two ticks until it sends the data into the adder. Now, right here, we have a two-tick repeater to compensate for that. And here we have a repeater on four ticks to test how fast the adder is. So right now we're guessing four ticks, and we're going to see how accurate that is. And that, of course, is a piston coming from the eighth bit of the adder. So let's flip the lever, and let's see what happens. Notice that comes on significantly before our four-tick delay. So, let's adjust that. Let's make it three ticks. And you notice it's still happening a little bit faster. So if I change this to two ticks, you notice they fire in sync. So this is actually a two tick adder right here. At least with control line logic. Now if you don't use control line logic, this isn't two ticks. If I do falling edge, this is, I believe, 2.5 ticks. I could be wrong on that, but I believe it is. Which is still good, but it's something that should be considered, I sh should say. It might be actually be slower. I never actually tried it without control line logic, but yeah. So there you go. This adder is 2 ticks, at least with control line logic. And yeah. So... 
This not only keeps all of our inputs in sync, not only prevents our adder from derping, but it also allows us to make our adder two ticks. And that's a really amazing trick. Again, thank you very much to Hank9600 for showing me that. It's absolutely amazing way of handling the issue. So, thank you again. And this adder is amazing. It's, again, mostly his design. The big thing I changed is I changed the XNOR a little bit because he had a slightly more complicated system of handling a piston glitch that could happen. I like my system because it's a little bit simpler and does the same thing, but, you know, yeah. That's pretty much the only difference in the design. So this is pretty much his design, even though I sort of came up with independently, but still, it's pretty much his design. So thank you very much to him for all of this. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned, and I will th see you in the next video.